I would now like to calculate the moment of inertia of a uniform sphere. And it has a mass m and a radius r. Now, I'm going to look at three axes. So I'll call this the x-axis, the y-axis, and the z-axis. And first, let's calculate the moment about the z-axis. So if I write down our definition, and I'm going to calculate it about the center of mass. So the moment about the z-axis, how do we do that? Well, we take a mass element. Now, I have to be a little bit careful here, because if you think about what is our perp for this mass element, it's actually x squared plus y squared squared. So the distance here, because it's going in a circle, the radius of that circle is x squared plus y squared. So we have x squared plus y squared. And we're integrating over the sphere. Now, this looks like a tough integral. But let's now look at what would the moment of inertia be about the x-axis? Well, the only difference here is I'm integrating now. First, if it's rotating about this axis, and I had a, my mass element, instead of x squared plus y squared about the z-axis, it's y squared plus z squared about the x-axis. That's the perpendicular distance. And if I calculate the moment of inertia about the y-axis, then same argument, I have z squared plus x squared. Now, the beauty of this problem, and in physics when we talk about beauty, we often talk about symmetry, is that by the symmetry of the sphere, all of these moments are equal. And let's call that ICM. Now, if I add these three pieces together, what do I get? So if I add ICMZ plus ICMX plus ICMY, I get three times the moment about the center of the axis. Now, what happens when I add these three integrals? I get dm. If you'll notice, x squared appears twice, y squared appears twice, and z squared appears twice. So I get 2 times x squared plus y squared plus z squared. But x squared plus y squared plus z squared is the radius of a small sphere of thickness dr. And my mass element, now I have to integrate over the sphere. And so now our mass element, dm, is the volume density of this times the volume. Now, what is the volume density? Well, that's the total mass over 4 thirds pi r cubed. And what is the volume of a sphere of radius r and thickness dr? That's 4 pi r squared dr. Um, so if I put that into my expression, what I get, let's just get rid of the 4 pi's, and I get 3m over r cubed times r squared dr. And so, our 3 ICM, I have a factor of 2, this integral becomes 2 times dm times r squared. And the dm is 3m r cubed r squared dr times another r squared. And what are we integrating over our r variable from? Our, these shells, spherical shells that we're integrating outward, go from r equals 0 to r equal capital R. Notice that our three m's cancel. And we'll just write this as ICM equals factor 2 times m over r cubed times the integral of r to the fourth dr from 0 to r. And that's a simple integral to do. r to the fourth is r to the fifth um, divided by 5. And so we get 2 over 5 
n r to the fifth over r cubed. And we conclude that the moment of inertia about any of the axes of the sphere is 2 fifths m r squared. And in this calculation, it's a beautiful example of how we use the symmetry of the sphere to simplify very complicated integrals.